Hey friends, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome today. We are jumping in the lab. I have a little lab uh, series going here for you. This is gonna be route leaking in the wild with Cisco iOS XR as our route leaking device. And this is a real life, real world situation that we're gonna show you so that you can, I don't know, I have a pencil in my hand. Um, so that we can show you how to get this to work in your situations as well, as well. And if you follow along, you should know that everything I do has real world, in the wild, real and raw context. So we're just taking something that's been done before, taking away all that customer specific information, and we're putting it in a lab environment for you to see. Um, as we go through this series, a couple things to just call out. Everything will be available to you so you can leverage it. We'll have the configurations probably on GitHub or something similar. We'll have the topology file, the diagrams uh, available to you to download and you can run with this in your environments in whatever virtualization environments you have. In this series, we're gonna test out CML2. I uh, haven't had a chance to really play around with it. So I figured we would just hit it and see how we like it. All right, so when we start these, I like to have a scenario, a story, and that's what we're gonna start out with here. So here, as I look at the screen, we have a zigzag zoo SaaS company. And if you're not familiar with, with what a SaaS is, that is a software as a service company or service as a service company. And what I mean by that is that there's some sort of application that is deployed somewhere, even on-prem or in the cloud, and customers are leveraging that application. All right, so some background information about our company here and what they're trying to accomplish, and then why we're being brought in to solve some sort of solution, some sort of problem with some sort of technical solution. Zigzag Zoo is a software as a service company. They have a very large portfolio of applications and services that the customers consume. These customers are worldwide. Uh, Zigzag Zoo's primary line of business is focused on the electrical power uh, company. So think of like, um, your, your national grids in the US, your some sort of power um, company of some sort. So this company has some SaaS applications those power uh, companies are leveraging. Now those SaaS applications are actually tracking power data, usage of power, consumption, and personal potentially if information from the, the customer side of things. All right, our second line of business for Zigzag Zoo is really focused on the financial industry. So this, I want you to think of banking, investment companies, insurance companies, uh, real estate, um, yeah, real estate firms. So that's really the financial industry. And then the same company, Zigzag Zoo, has applications and services that provide analytics. So think machine learning, AI, right? Machine learning, artificial intelligence, processing that data, a whole bunch of data, going into this analytics, these analytics tools, and they're processing that data and then making real world decisions in real time on that data for these companies. And that last line there is said that these companies can make rapid and effective decisions in real time. Uh, a good example might be um, like a stockbroker, a stockbroker or some sort of financial um, broking, broker uh, organization where they are uh, required to make real time decisions. They need to, and so we need to instantiate that. All right, so now we get to our fourth kind of um, line here. Zigzag Zoo is looking to speed up its time to market on a new application and services, uh, including regular updates to its current portfolio. So there's, there's a constraint here. There's some sort of problem. Currently, it takes three plus months to roll out a new or updated service. Well, that is a problem. That's a long time to get a new service up and running. So that's probably what we're going to have to solve first here. All right, so to achieve this goal, the application development team, so your development team, your application owners, are, are asking for a dedicated developer or development enclave to be created so that they can quickly test and validate new code. So we really want kind of an agile framework. They want to be able to have their own environment, instantiate their own services and applications and whatever components that they need to instantiate. And then they can test it, do some quick code upgrades, push those codes and really test it in their own environment. Uh, this developer enclave has some requirements. It looks like it needs connectivity to the internet and it needs connectivity to shared services. So I'm assuming here that there'd be some sort of shared services. So think like your infrastructure services, like DNS, DHCP, maybe there's some network access control, NTP or time. Uh, there's a number of shared services. Internet is actually one of those shared services usually too. The developer enclave should not be able to access the production services for fear of production outages from incorrect and untested changes. So this takeaway here, this exact takeaway is that a lot of times 
development environments and staging environments have access to the production application. And by mistake, and I've seen this a lot, their changes get propagated to production and then they're not tested and they actually break production. So here there's a control or a constraint that we have to make sure that can't happen. So we have to give a, we have to create a new development environment, right? So that's, that's to create a new development environment. Then we have to make sure that the development environment can get internet access and do those shared services. But then we also have to ensure that development environment cannot access the production servers. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our next slide, which is our current topology diagram. And we're gonna take a few minutes just to kind of cover down on what this looks like, right? Uh, so we have our internet bubble on the top here, right? So INET is internet. And uh, this is our connection to the cloud or to the internet where we're gonna get to all the internet services. This uh, provider is running BGP. We got 886 is our ASN. Uh, we got our fancy Google address 8.8.8.8 .8 for testing purposes, right? And then this provider is routing for the 66.000 slash eight network. As we come southbound, we have our core router here. All right, and this is our POP, our point of presence device to the internet. And this is actually running BGP 44883. So this is where we're gonna be running our eBGP neighborship to the internet to get our stuff outbound. To simplify this topology, we're not running firewalls and we're not running any type of net network access control. Though we could, network access and network address translation. <laughs> My brain sometimes misfires. I talk about NAC a lot, and I meant to say network address translation, not network access control. Though we could do both those in the future. I wanna show why we're doing what we're doing here. So we're trying to simplify the environment. So as we go to the right, uh, or further to the prod side of this environment, production, we have our uh, prod router here, and that is gonna be running on IGP, so interior gateway protocol, that's running OSPF 10, and the entire production environment is in the 10.10, .10 that 0, 0 slash 16 range. So that RFC 19 range, and we're gonna really instantiate that moving forward. All right, moving down, we have a switch. It's our production switch here, right? And, and this is gonna be where all of our servers are connecting into for the time being. And we have two mock servers here. We have our production server subnet, which is 100.100.100.0 slash 24. Uh, and that specific server is 100, 100, 100, 100. And then we have a shared server subnet, which is 150.150.150.0 slash 24. And our shared server subnet is, or our shared server itself, because we're only building one, is 150.150.150.150. I think I did four 150s. I think it makes sense. So just some simplifications here, right? So we're using one switch in a bigger environment. I'd probably have two dedicated switches, one for prod and one for shared services to kind of isolate them out. But in this architecture, we're trying to keep it simple. Yeah, that's that's our topology right now. So that's a quick overview. In the next uh, video, we're gonna go ahead and start configuring the production environment just to get you some context on how we're gonna configure this from the ground up with redistributions and whatnot. And then um, we'll get into kind of solving their development concerns, all right? All right, my friends, I will see you in the next video.